The old ball game has been measured, mapped, charted, and analyzed in countless new ways since Bill James published his first baseball abstract 40 years ago. Analytics is an attempt to answer the question, why do teams win? But that's not always true. I mean, there's, there's the level of analytics on that level, but there's also the level of what is good for the league, um, or the level of what is good for the player. But in general, it's about why do, why do teams win? We understand now that the best thing a batter can do is not make an out. The best thing a pitcher can do is not allow a run. Now, the component parts of those two facts are multifarious, and the analysis of them, I think, gives us a better understanding of what makes teams win. And that is the charge for a manager, for a general manager, for club owners. Sports analytics is taking data and turning it into useful information, whether that's for fans or decision makers, and providing it to them in a really efficient way. The increase of information can make the game more exciting, more interesting. Uh, you know, fans that are more in tune with maybe why decisions are being made, whether it's in the dugout uh, or in the front office, and how, that, that, the, how those decisions play out on the field day in and day out, I think can make the game that much more entertaining. Numbers have always been a part of baseball since the first box score was published in 1859. But the new ways in which huge sets of data are being analyzed have changed how the game can be consumed and enjoyed. Even when I was a kid, we would have arguments about, you know, who the MVP should be or who should be playing or who was a better catcher, Thurman Munson or Carlton Fisk. And now you just have more weapons at your disposal. You have more information. There's more things to look at. And I think the more things that you can look at, the more things that you can explore, uh, it makes it more fun. A long time ago, you'd just say, that guy hits the ball hard. Um, it, it, and line drives always look hard. So now if a guy hits the ball 110 miles an hour and we can track it, it gives them a good starting basis to say this player is an elite player versus a guy who hits 100 miles an hour and it's just a hard line drive. I use various advanced metrics. For pitchers, I like to use pitch FX data. And um, for position players, I like to use uh, war, runs created, runs created plus and a couple of other statistics. Now, when I watch baseball, I have a better understand, I could, I'm better able to judge performance based off of the advanced statistics available and the data that's out there. People sit with their phone, people sit with their iPad, uh, sometimes with, with a, a laptop open, and they want to be able to look up numbers. They want to be able to talk to their friends about numbers. So you see people using our tools as a second screen experience putting them into the social realm, using them to talk about uh, situations with their friends that are, you know, more interesting and the conversation is a little deeper than, you know, I like that guy and he's a really good uh, hitter with the bases loaded. Now they can actually have numbers to back that up or disprove it. I think there's a lot of different circumstances into judging a player, but I'm always known as, and my friends used to call me a stat stuffer because I always use stats to back up everything I did. Um, and I would always bring out these ridiculous stats that they didn't even know where I got them. I've been doing this since 1997, um, and there's been an explosion in the industry in terms of uh, teams paying attention to analytics, people that study the game and write about the game and talk about the game, um, digging in and, and, and kind of, um, you know, just creating new ways to look at the game and to, to define players. So as a broadcaster, you have to pay attention to that or you're doing a disservice to your viewers. So I'm on fan graphs and baseball reference and all these different baseball websites before every game, making sure that I've got up-to-date information because the viewer now has access to all that, uh, the real sophisticated baseball fan. And you don't want to be spewing stuff on a telecast that they can disprove. But the interesting thing about like baseball is that in order to like be involved in the discussions and follow along and broadcast even, you need to have some sort of basic knowledge of like the sabermetrics involved. And so like for baseball, you kind of have to like use some sabermetrics to evaluate players. I think analytics can be a real powerful tool in identifying kind of the needs and the passion points um, for new fans um, is, is really a primary tool. And I would talk about the fan engagement strategies and fan development. We talk a lot about a data scientist and a data storyteller for a team has the ability to have the focus of a scientist 
and the wonderment of a child in really engaging kind of the art and science of a passion point. I feel like analytics connect me with sports, specifically baseball, because it is a slow game and there's a lot of talking, to talking time. And so it's a way to kind of bring more life to the game, to fill in those gaps. That's why baseball is probably my favorite sport because there is so much talking and there's so much analyzing what's going on in the game. Storytelling is storytelling and if you do it well and you're able to elevate what makes Clay Kershaw special and some of these new metrics help advance that cause, then you can make his story and thus the game more entertaining. If you're just rolling out a bunch of numbers that don't have any great value or knowledge or significance to the viewer, they're not going to help your story. Analytics are, are definitely something that I like to use because it's fact. I mean, there's no better proof than I think sometimes the numbers. However, I think storytelling is really within, you know, the personality, you know, a lot of the visualization that you're going to see. Um, just getting to know these guys as people, too. And that's something sometimes the numbers don't touch, down, touch on. So I think the analytics is definitely part of the story, but not the complete story when we're trying to really personalize these guys. Analytics and entertainment intersect at the ballpark on the scoreboard now. I mean, you with the, the advent of StatCast and the information that's available almost immediately to the fan base, whether it be live in the park, whether it be following on game day at MLB.com, or the various sources that you can go to tap into, we can see first step efficiency in the outfield. We can see the ability to cover ground in all directions almost immediately. StatCast affects the way fans consume baseball because people have always wondered how hard a ball was hit, how far an outfielder had to run. So. We have these numbers now and fans have easily, um, they can easily access this data and it's starting to answer questions that people have always wondered like, would so and so have made this play? Would this player have missed this ball that another player might have caught? You can appreciate a great catch without knowing the route efficiency. But for some of us, we want to know the route efficiency. We want to know what type of jump he got, or should he be diving for that ball, or what's the catch probability for a ball that's hit like at that you know, vector, at that exit velocity, in that zone, how far he had to run all of that. The analysis of an opponent's tendencies in various game situations can lead to frequent changes in pitching and defense, and that can slow the game down. There's some people within the game who think that the, the shift toward this analytics is bad for the game and bad for the fan experience because offense is being choked out of the game, um, in part with defensive shifting and so much of an em emphasis on pitching changes. What do pitching changes take? They take a lot of time. So what are, what are the killers of pace? Those things that produce not only stoppages but produce commercials. So every it, there was, I believe, a um, postseason game last year in which we had six pitchers used in a half inning to record one out. And this is the death of the game because each pitcher change is accompanied by, in the postseason, a two minute and 40 second commercial break. I think they've created a game where there's a lot of strikeouts, you know, so there's, there's strikeouts and there's not a lot of balls in play. And in some ways, I think people would say that's not the greatest way for the game to go. In the 2016 Major League Baseball season, a ball was put in play an average of only once every three minutes and 25 seconds. Just 10 years ago, the wait between balls in play was shorter by 23 seconds. Since 1976, an average game has six fewer balls in play, but lasts 31 minutes longer. One thing that I've noticed that I think is could be an issue is that often um, the way the rules are structured now, good baseball can be boring baseball. I mean, I personally would like to see more balls in play. So I, you know, I think there are rule changes that are possible that would make that happen. Reduce glove size. Um, you know, per, I mean, there may be other things that you could do that could increase the number of balls in play and maybe speed up the game in, in that way. I don't know that when a game goes three hours and 15 minutes, we could say it rates worse than a game that goes 245. But I do think you can, you can say that when there's compelling action on the screen, you're going to hold viewers longer than when you're standing around. I don't think it's a matter of maintaining the audience. I think it's getting a new one. How do we reach the new ones? How do we reach the ones that aren't watching at all right now? Um, and I think that's the biggest question, is not only young, but more diverse, more women, um, just more people that aren't watching right now. And how do, we, how do we get them into the game? The majority of American men and women say they are baseball fans. But the median age of fans watching on TV is 56, 
and less than 12% of those viewers are under age 25. Our survey of 250 men and women, most of them in the 18 to 39 age range, showed that access to analytics can increase a younger fan's interest in attending games and in playing fantasy baseball. The average fantasy player is 20 years younger than the average TV baseball viewer. I think analytics provides a new level of spice and uh, is extremely appealing to younger fans. And the rise of fantasy baseball is intertwined with analytics. Fantasy sports is all based on their numbers and all based on their statistics and it's not based on their intangibles. So I think that analytics has really changed the way that I've played. It certainly gives people more reason to come back. You'll come back during games, you'll come back more often. We're in the business of having people come to our site and spend time on our site. So anytime you can provide something that makes them come back more often and come back for longer periods of time is good for the business. It plays a major role in being able to keep fans involved and interested so therefore you have a higher level of demand for the sport than you would otherwise. Uh, I think that if you know the fantasy things were completely discarded and we didn't let the daily fantasy or they cracked down further on other fantasy leagues that there'd be a big drop off in the people that are watching. Fantasy has really boomed with the new rise in advanced analytics, I think, because I think it's so much like the stock market. The more information one fantasy sports player has, the more advantage they're going to have over someone who decides to not use that information. The collection and analysis of data is not limited to player performance. It is now being used to study how fans interact with sports, how they spend their money, what they are willing to spend it on, and how much. The goal is to enhance each fan's experience at the game and keep them coming back. We did a survey of minor league baseball fans and we found that the average fan likes to go to their wallet three times per game. So if you pause and think about that, how do you use analytics to maximize fans coming to games but also at the same time maximizing the revenue that you want as the owner of the team? So one of the things that a lot of minor league baseball teams have done as a result of the analytics, free parking. But what they've done is they've quietly put an extra 50 cents here and there on their ticket prices. So they're bundling it in where the consumer feels great and coming in and all of a sudden the value proposition is it's a free parking. So what do you do as a consumer? That's one last time I've had to go to my wallet. And as a result, I feel better about developing a love of the game. I feel better about maybe getting that extra hat or t-shirt for my kid and I actually have, have walked away with a more positive experience. I think maybe because you have so many games and you have so many different things that you're trying to attract fans to over the course of time that you need to be bringing up new and exciting things for people who want to be able to keep coming in. Sure, you have your season ticket holders that are going to be diehards and they're all the time, but you'd like people that only come out once a month to be able to increase the number of days they're coming out. So they want to find more and better ways to be able to do that. So understanding the impact of promotions, understanding the impact of a slight change in price, you know, moving to dynamic pricing models, those type of things. Baseball's been at the forefront because I think it matters so much. You think about NFL, you know, prior to the last couple of years, if you're selling out all the time and you have long waiting lists for your season tickets holders, you don't necessarily have to be as responsive. The other sports, when you're not selling out all the time, need to be more responsive, but I think baseball had the kind of lead on this and the others are still trying to catch up. We can provide views on a daily basis uh, for, for marketers or the ticket office to log in and be able to say, based on this singular view or this collection of users, here's everything from our ticket sales to our renewal rates to fans that are at risk, uh, maybe at risk of not renewing season tickets, uh, to merchandise sales. And we can look at dashboards a number of different ways. Maybe we can break them down to certain demographics by gender, by age, by income. Any kind of economist, finance person just loves data because they can go ahead and be able to learn what people are doing and learn preferences and look at how you know changes occur based upon substitution and other things like that. So the availability allows you to better model what people are doing. So you can go ahead and get at it not just at the sense of what are our fans doing, but what are our female fans doing or what are our fans between 18 and 25 doing. You know, those things with the information that comes about makes you able to go ahead and do things that are more specific than my be able to help that group. Let's bridge that in-stadium experience to the out-of-stadium experience uh, using data. So 
you check into the game, which a lot of fans do, however you check in on, on Facebook, on Swarm, on Twitter, Instagram, or through our app. You have your father, your brother, your friend sitting at home who now knows you're at the game. Say, I want to buy him a beer. Or, gosh, they're at the Super Bowl, it's cold. I want to buy him a sweatshirt. Right? He, I just saw he took a selfie of himself. He doesn't even have a hat on. I want to buy him a hat. Why not let those fans out the side of the stadium relate to the fans inside of the stadium uh, or engage with fans inside of the stadium and deliver the, the merchandise right to them? If I go to the concession stand and they know that I like orange soda and rather than having to order the orange soda, it's right there for me with no ice because I don't like ice because I got to get the orange soda all the way up you know, with no extra ice and so, because it also waters it down, we don't want that. But um, if they know that already with the no ice, I think that's like a game changer. Because not only do you know me as a fan, we're connecting, and this is also impacting how much time I'm spending in this line, because I'm trying to go back and see the no hitter that's being thrown, or see if somebody's gonna hit a grand slam. The collection of so much information about fan preferences, whether they attend the games for which they bought tickets, and how much money they spend using a team loyalty card, can raise questions about the security of that data. The concern to me would be data breach. So I guess that there's two ways to look at that question. There's the, say, the way of, do I trust the organization that's collecting my data? And the second is, do I trust that they have security policies in place that isn't gonna have a third party come in and infiltrate or hack that data? So the way I look at that is, am I concerned that a hacker comes in? I'm concerned about that every day. I already accept so much of what my phone does. Um, so I think for me, going into the stadium and just having the phone use the information that I already give to it um, and giving that to a third party, for me, I think that's OK. The problem would be me not acknowledging that that's going on and me not having someone tell me that that's going on. For me, that's the biggest thing. Yes, I'm definitely OK with um, teams knowing what I'm doing at the ballpark, what I'm eating. It helps them and thus it'll help me. Virtually every major sport is now collecting and analyzing vast sets of data to improve the product they present to fans. The NBA, for example, uses six cameras in every arena to record every game and analyze the efficiency and effectiveness of every player's movement. For the 2017 season, Major League Baseball has approved the use of wearable technology on the field. The primary goal is to learn more about mechanics and their impact on the body in order to prevent injuries, which will help keep stars on the field. Now we're making advances also in biometric data, so we're collecting heart rate and, and physical load that players are taking on during a game. And so that's going to provide a whole new set of, you know, whether it's you know, in the background helping players stay healthy uh, longer during seasons, which has a major impact on fan engagement and fan enjoyment of, uh, of the sport. I think that a really cool thing you could do is measure heart rate, um, just you know how, how much pressure are they feeling right now. So if a pitcher's on the mound in the bottom of the ninth, is their heart rate really beating or are they keeping cool? We have pitch counts for pitchers, but there are other factors as well. It's not merely the number of pitches, it's the torque on the elbow and the shoulder. So these factors seem to me susceptible to analytics, susceptible to quantification, and that, I think, is a tremendous plus for the game. I don't know where the future goes. I think a lot of it now is going to be tied towards a biomechanical information that clubs are going to be able to compile um, as they're putting their rosters together. Is a six foot five right-handed pitcher more likely to get hurt than a six foot two right-handed pitcher? And so as you contemplate drafting that kid and giving him a $6 million signing bonus, do you favor one over the other? just because the information tells you that you know player X is more likely to get hurt. I think the tracking of players is going to go ahead and create a whole new slew of statistics that people are going to be able to find interesting. And again, some people will like them, some people will not, but that conversation in and of itself makes people tune in. 35% of the fans in our survey said that analytics have made them more passionate about sports. And in that passion is the potential that new generations of fans will find new ways to enjoy their old ball games. I'm more into watching it now versus when I was younger, when I would judge a baseball player by, based on how he looked and how I thought he played, versus now I could judge him by how he actually plays. To have more information, to be seeking out more information about the game, uh, makes you appreciate it all the more. Older fans may say that they they are drowning in numbers and it gets in the way of their pleasure of watching a ball game or even thinking about a ball game. But younger fans have an appetite for analysis 
and I think it can enhance your enjoyment of watching baseball closely, whether it's at the ball game or on the internet or on the television set. I was never a big baseball fan. I thought the game was too slow, and I was like, you know, you may not only see one score in a game. But then now I started to think about it, I, I took a different turn, and not that it's more interesting that way. They have a stat for everything nowadays in baseball, and you know, what it allows you to do is really um, dig deep, and it allows you to connect to different aspects of the sport. Probably my favorite stat is whip, walks and hits per innings pitched. I'm a big fan of pitchers. I would rather watch a dominant pitcher than a power hitter, and it just shows how great a pitcher is through whip. I feel like every year someone's bringing something new to the table. I mean, it might not be every year, but it's felt like it over the past few years. Um, so I don't think there's anything I don't already know, but it should be interesting to see if there's something that comes out in the next few years that I didn't know that I wanted to know. The more you know about something, the more you enjoy it. One assumes that the people who enjoy uh, the opera most are the people who actually go to the opera and know the most about it. One assumes that the people who enjoy movies most are the people who go to movies 200 times a year. The, uh, the same is true of baseball. The more you know about it, the more you enjoy it. So I have to say I enjoy it more all the time.